Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We are here today to discuss the decision to allow Shamrock Rovers B or Shamrock Rovers 2 as they're known into the SSE Electricity League First Division for the 2020 season. It's caused huge controversy. I think the other nine First Division clubs are up in arms and uh, we're just here today to, to discuss it, see what people's thoughts are and uh, find where we can go. Paul, what do you think? I think the main thing to take from it is the nine clubs voted against it. It was unanimous. The FAI haven't listened to them. They're ultimately going to be playing against a team of youth players who are coming through. And then sometimes it's going to be senior players maybe coming back from injury. It's a bit of a joke, especially when they voted against it. And particularly for teams at the top looking for promotion like Longford and Drada, maybe even Bray as well. They're not going out and not fielding the team. They're automatically losing three points, and that's going to be very bad for them come the end of the season. Okay, Ger, what do you think? Yeah, it's a, t- it's a tough one. I suppose the FBI would, would probably feel that they're a bit tanned, high, or hands are tied. I suppose which the collapse of Limerick and probably find it hard to get someone else a license. And that. of course, they have done it before. 2014, they were in the league as well, and they actually kind of really made up the numbers back then to finish sixth out of the eight team first division it was back then, but. Look, Shamrock Rovers academy has changed a lot since then. They've got a lot of money since, and they've got a lot of young players coming through. You know, the finance of the club has probably picked up a lot in the last six years as well. And again, it's going to be tough. Like you know, if you have a scenario and situation where you know they're using this opportunity to get a couple of first team players back into fitness after injury, it is very unfortunate, and very unfair on the likes of Longford, the Drogheda's, the Brays, and the UCDs who you expect to be challenging for promotion. It's not an ideal situation, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad at least there's someone there that there's still going to be 10 teams in the division, there's still going to be 10 games every week. Not every team is going to be going two weeks out. Some teams aren't going to be going two weeks out of a game, maybe a month out of one game for revenue and stuff like that. So I'm glad there has been some compromise coming that they have to fold 10 teams in the first division, but I think you know, there could have been better alternatives used than putting Shamrock Rovers B team in because, as we've seen with Finney Perch over the last couple of days, now don't all on a piece of the action as well. Okay, and uh, what what do you think, Paul? Would you rather have gone with a nine team division? Because I I don't think there was another option of another club. I I don't think there was another option, but again, nine teams wouldn't be great. You think one team's not playing every week? They're gonna lose a bit of match sharpness for that week. Um, it's it is a lot better with the ten teams, but they could have. There could have been another option. Like it took them too long to sort it out as well. It was drawn out, and Rovers B were always really the only option for them. They should have looked at other avenues, maybe like again, if, like you want the other the other teams now want to have a B team because Rovers have a B team. It's not really fair to be honest. But again, if it's the only option, it's probably for the best that we have ten teams. Okay, I I, I mean I remember actually in 2014 there was a lot of discussion, a lot of clubs mm. kicked up a fuss and said they wanted a B team, but ultimately when mm. Shamrock Rovers pulled out, nobody else actually yeah. wanted a B Not team. Uh, I I think one of the other issues is that I, I I suspect many of the clubs in and around Dublin are going to really miss out on players because of this mm. because the Rovers Academy is incredibly strong, and I I think a lot of clubs would be looking and saying well the guys. Who just quite not yet are ready for the Rovers first team squad. They'd be very, very good players for the likes of Cavan Teeley, uh, UCD, Drogheda, etc. etc. Um, and I think that's that, that's going to be a concern because they are much more likely now to stay to stay at Shamrock Rovers. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah as you mentioned there, like the draw will be there from the with Rovers now because they're gonna get that first team football, they're gonna get in an outlook and going to be getting spotted every Friday night, they're probably going to get off to you know, a better wage or money on a weekly basis and they would have got like a Cabin TV or a Bray or a Drogheda or a Longford who part time or UCD obviously as well. And obviously they've got an opportunity to put themselves in the, in the shop window as well. Of course, an interesting um, thing as well, of course, with the FEI and the, the, or the FA Cup and the AEA Sports Cup, they aren't going to be able to participate in that, so it's going to be one less team in that. So. How they want to obviously maybe look at that as well, or certain teams are going to have to end up getting around or buys in certain rounds as well. Like, so there is a little bit of a mess as well from that kind of side as well. Okay, and I think one of the other attractions for the players and even for opposition players as well is the the chance to play at Tallis Stadium. I think it is the best 
the best stadium in the league at the moment, the best. And, and Shamrock Rovers have superb facilities out in Roadstone, etc. Uh, the players will have the 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 Rovers B or Rovers two players will have um, the best of physios, equipment, gyms, etc. Yeah. So that that'll certainly be attractive. Um, so um, and Vinnie Perth, I think he seems to want to bring Dundalk in for twenty twenty one. What do you think of that? That's yeah, I heard him saying the other day, I'm not surprised because Dundalk, well, from a financial point of view, are right up there, if not probably uh, ahead of Shamrock Rovers as well. And they're going to be looking at it, I think, from the point of view as well. It's giving Shamrock Rovers a bit of a head start as well because they're going to have a lot of their fringe players now quite sharp and quite active for Dundalk. They have a lot of players sitting idle and feel the cup come against them maybe towards the end of the season with fatigue, if we're looking from that kind of um, point of view. It's, I suppose it's really personal, it's a, a good way to kind of solve this, but I think the finances just probably aren't there in Irish football. Is maybe it's a creation of the twenty three league or reserve league. He's right in saying the step up from under nineteen to senior league is a big step up. Obviously now Rovers are bridging that gap. It is gonna be a big ass, but in the, the day, like apart from Rovers, Dundalk, maybe a possible case for Bowles or Pats, Derry, you know, you're not gonna really look at other clubs are gonna be able to fund putting out a second adult team and then there's no point having the league with just four or five teams. If Dundalk definitely come into the first division with a B team. You just definitely see a lot more uh, rumps just be kicked up over that. Well, yeah. Yeah. what do you think of other, other second second teams being in our, our second tier? I agree with Dundalk's argument simply because they've been the best team in the league for the last five, six years. They've won the league several amount of times, uh, won the cup twice as well. Again, they'd want to be matching Rovers because you think Rovers after the cup win will want to be kicking on now. So. And this year is probably a very big year for them. Keeping Jack Byrne as well is crucial. Um, I think Dundalk would I can understand where he's coming from but again I don't think it should be an argument there shouldn't be B teams in the league anyway ok but there are I mean if you look yeah. around Europe Spain yeah. Germany or you I mean you can name the top leagues probably with the exception of England they all allow second teams you have Barcelona B Real Madrid B you have Bayern Munich are in the third tier in Germany I mean should we have B teams? What's what's so wrong about it? Again, like the finance and countries are just so far ahead of um, our country. And you have to remember, well, we've only got two leagues. So, like, you have Shamrock Rovers in our second tier here, likes of Barcelona's B team, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Lusa. They're all in the third, fourth tier of German Spanish football. They're a long way from the top league and not exactly affecting top clubs or anything else like that as much as it will be affecting clubs here. So, it's not you can't really compare like with like as you mentioned like England you know they have a separate league for second teams as well Scotland Celtic Rangers I'm pretty sure if they wanted to have their say they could easily have a second team that would be well able to compete in the first or second uh, league in Scotland and they don't like so I think yes I can see where you're coming from that from the point of view but I, I think the circumstances and the structures in the likes of Germany and Spain are completely different to what we have here in Ireland. Now, I, I think, I'm explain my bias, I'm a, obviously a Limerick fan, but and the FAI have, I think, have made it clear that if Limerick come back, and really hopefully they will come back in 2021, there will be a place for them. Um, and they've also said, though, that the ideal number for the, the second tier is actually 12, not 10. So uh, I think Limerick are going to come back. Does that mean that... Shamrock Rovers will go or will they will they let Dundalk in because I don't see anywhere else and I know the FAI have been trying to, to encourage maybe a team from Kerry to a team from Mayo or something mm. to come in I don't see anywhere obvious that there's going to be another team so what do we do for 2021? Um, um, well I think if they've said 12 teams is the best number for it I think you're going to have to have at least one B team in it because I don't see where the other clubs are going to come from. There are, like you have the Kerry League and the Mayo League teams, the underage, which are doing very well at the minute. But would they be able, but technically they could be a B team as well, really. It's the same as Sean Grovers. But again, if they want 12 teams, you're probably going to have, a, have to have at least one or two B teams. And I think if a second team came in, there'd be absolute uproar as well. But again, I don't know. Yeah, I'd have to agree with Paul there. I think if they are looking at a 12 team, First division, you have to look down the route, unfortunately, probably of B teams from the Premier Division. I would love to see the likes of Kerry League or Mayo League, but just to kind of even spread the game, get more teams in different areas, different pockets, attraction. Like, I think somewhere the FUI could even look into, I think, would be a great pocket to have a team, would be minute because they're on that door, Dublin borderline, they've got easy access to Dublin. They're on the border as well with Mead, so you can get attraction there. They're only 
20, they've done well in the intermediate. Yeah, they've done well in the And even yeah. those things, well, there's Paul mentioned there, even Kilkenny, I know they used to have a team before as well, but you look at their junior and intermediate teams as well in, in the FBI Cup, they compete really well. There's a strong attraction there, whether it be in a city or a big town, whatever you say, is not point of view for them to easily have a team. But again, it's just kind of getting, generating interest as well and just kind of getting the finances, getting up to standard, passing licenses, where we all know it's going to be easier for the FBI to pass off a Dundalk B team or a Shamrock Rovers B team. The, the thing about it is as well, do you really need another Dublin team? There's so many already. It's like you want to try, as you've said, you want to try push it to the yeah. counties where it's not really like in Munster, we only really have two teams, Cork and Waterford. Uh, get, Cove Ramblers. Cove Ramblers, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Cove yeah. Ramblers, yeah. That's three teams out of, you know, you could push another one down there, definitely. It's such a big, vast area as well. Definitely push another team down yeah, there. Yeah, like everyone just kind of think with these kind of like country towns, oh, it's all big GA, but like, I know like from close home Westport County, oh, that's a big football town. Yeah. You know, likes of the Stowe is a big football town in Kerry. Clarny has a big pocket as well. Clarny sells are one of the top intermediate teams in Ireland. You will be surprised if there's regular action down and high, a decent standard of football, how it can kind of catch on and don't kind of just go with the usual stereotypical type that outside Dublin it's all GA country. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe the big question is what is going to happen next? Because there's been a lot of sabre rattling. The the clubs have the other nine clubs have threatened. They feel the FBI has been very ha- heavy handed on this. They've threatened legal action. They've even I, I've seen reports that they may refuse to even play against Shamrock Rovers too, or they may may even feel they're under nineteen sides. Um, is it all going to blow over, or do you think? Do you think something will happen? Yes. Uh, I think it should have happened already, but I think it will blow over because you can't be sacrificing points like that. I know maybe maybe they, if they played their 19th teams, they might they might beat Rovers. You don't know that, but I don't think they really want to go about it that way, especially if you're looking at for promotion. You want to uh, go out and just win the match straight off, no messing. So I think it would probably just blow over. I don't think the teams could afford to uh, just sacrifice points like that. Okay. Yeah, sure, I agree as well. Like the timeline that there, it's you know it's only seven weeks now since the first division starts. The fixtures were even pretty late coming out as a wire three weeks behind the Premier Division, also because of the whole situation of trying to find an extra team. But as Paul said, like sacrificing three points promotion race is a lot. You know, giving up a revenue as well, like and the income of attendance. Like they give up that home game against Shamrock Rovers to cut away three to four weeks without having another home game. That's a long time to have revenue for particularly for a first division club, even Premier Division clubs. So it is. So I think it is. Unfortunately, you're just gonna to have to like just let it go and yeah, I'm just having fortune. Probably have to get on with it. Well, there we are. That's the the views of our panel. But what do you think? Do you think Shamrock Rovers two should be allowed in the first division? Will you go and watch them? Uh, do you think the club should boycott the games? Should the fans boycott the games, or or is it a fantastic chance for the players and the first division fans to? To, 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 for the players to play in Tallis Stadium, for the fans to go to a game in Tallis Stadium and see the facilities, etc. Anyway, give us your thoughts. 